Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to be solving a complex horizontal force problem in five straightforward steps using an example problem here. And this is something that you're probably going to be expected to do if you're in a physics or an AP physics class. Like this is a typical problem that you would need to be able to solve. I've gone ahead and made an animation based off of the simulation website Ophysics. I'll put a link down in the comments below using the actual given values that we're going to be using for this problem. And so the information is on the right as well. And so we've got a crate being pulled at an angle. It's sliding across a horizontal surface. We know what the coefficient of kinetic friction is. The problem is asking for the acceleration that the crate undergoes. We're going to assume the crate starts from rest and does begin the slide at the beginning of the problem. So we're dealing with kinetic friction, not static friction. I do want to point out at the outset that the author here uses T for tension. We will talk more formally about tension later. Just know at the outset that tension is a pulling force that is distributed through a rope, a string, or a chain, something like that. And it pulls on both objects equally that it's attached to. For now, I'm just going to call this force applied to simplify things. Tension we'll get into a little bit later in the course. I will say at the outset as well that if you put these given values into the simulation, it comes out with an answer of 3.89 meters per second squared. So let's go ahead and see if we come out with the same answer and quickly work through these strategies to be able to solve a complex horizontal force problem in five straightforward steps. So let's get to it. First of all, your first strategy is you're going to need to write what the problem gives you in terms of variables in the x and y axis and draw your free body diagram. So let's do that. We can read through the problem again and go step by step. And essentially, these are the things that we know in the x-axis. We know what our mu k value is, the coefficient of kinetic friction. We don't know what the force applied in the x is. Our kinetic friction force, so I'm just thinking about the forces in the x-axis, we don't know what that is. We do know our initial velocity is going to be zero. This could be used for a follow-up problem if I wanted to draw in kinematics, and maybe someday I'll do a follow-up problem to this where we figure out what the final velocity is after a certain amount of time. And our acceleration, the x, we just don't know at the beginning of the problem. So these are some of the things that we would list out as our knowns and unknowns for the x-axis. Let's do the same thing in the y-axis. In the y-axis, we don't know our force applied in the y, or our tension in the y is what it was called for the animation. We don't know what our force due to gravity is, but we can solve for that, right? That's pretty easy to solve for because we do have our mass and we know what our acceleration due to gravity is on Earth. It's 9.81 meters per second squared. Our normal force we don't know, and our acceleration of the y is zero. That's important. The reason why we know that is because the crate is not somehow magically flying up in the atmosphere or down into the surface in an accelerating fashion. It's just sitting on the surface in terms of the y-axis. It's literally not moving in the y, and so therefore its acceleration of the y is zero. All right, really important in the beginning, too, to draw our free body diagram here as well. So this is our free body diagram for this. Notice I have used some different notations. This is what the problem has given us. It's calling it tension. For now, we're going to switch back over to calling this force applied. And the animation also shows the normal forces at capital N. And you'll see these things done from time to time. So I'm going to try to familiarize you with different ways of writing things. So it doesn't come as a shock if you see them later. But yeah, I'm going to label this as the normal force F sub N over here. And then this is the force due to gravity pointing downwards. I do want to point out that there are three things here we can solve for. We can solve for the component in the x-axis for the force applied, the force applied in the y, and the force due to gravity. And that's important to start thinking about, well, what can I solve for? And I want to stress one thing at the outset here. You probably don't know how to solve this problem. When you're first looking at a problem, students sometimes can get overwhelmed. When they look at an entire problem, go, ah, I don't know how to do this. The key is to get your strategies down and just take it step by step by step and you're going to be totally fine. Like you may not know how to get to your final results, but if you know what your next step is, take that next step and be careful as you go and you're going to be totally fine in the long run. That's how we're going to approach problems in physics. All right, so one thing we can do is we know that we can take this vector over here, this force applied, and we can make it into the hypotenuse of a right triangle, and we can break it down and solve for FAX and FAY. We do know this angle here, 28.4, that should go over here. And we can go ahead and do the math for this. I'm going to quickly go through this because at this stage in the game, that should be pretty easy. If you need to pause and look at that, 
or work some of that out yourself, go for it. But in any case, our third strategy is we're going to solve for components and whatever else you can start with. So if there's a force at an angle, we definitely can break that down into components. And I'm going to go ahead and update this with my numbers. So I'm updating my list as I go with more information. This is a systematic way of filling out information for the problem so that you don't get overwhelmed and can take this step by step and solve the problem. All right, one more thing we can solve for that we mentioned that we can solve for. We have enough information to be able to take one next step. My question is, can you anticipate what that next step is going to be? Can you think about what else we can do? Well, we can solve for the force due to gravity, right? We know what the mass is. We know what our gravitational acceleration is. And so we're going to go ahead and solve for the force due to gravity there. If you're a little confused by that, I have done a screencast. I will put up links to some of these screencasts for some of the foundational ideas I'm building upon here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and update our list of known information as well. Okay, next up, what we're going to talk about here is very, very important. I have a name for this. I call it the sum of the forces strategy. And if you do the same thing every time when you work with a forces problem, it's going to really help you to solve the problem correctly. All right, so let's take a look at how to do this. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to write the sum of the forces in the x-axis and then just add up, literally have the sum of the forces in the x-axis. Notice your fk, I should write a negative over here, positive over here. It's kind of implied in this drawing, but your fk is going to be a negative value. So it's like we're adding a negative value here. And then the second line that you write is Newton's second law. The sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. I'm going to use a sub x here to remind myself I'm just looking in the x-axis. Then what you do is you set them equal to each other and you write the resulting equation over here. So this is our resulting equation in the x-axis. And at this point, we're kind of stuck. We don't know our fk and we don't know our acceleration in the x. I'm going to go ahead and label this as equation one so that later in the problem when I come back to it, I can just say, oh yeah, remember that equation one, that's what I mean. Our next step is going to be to do the exact same thing in the y-axis. So my first step for the sum of the forces strategy is to write out literally the sum of the forces, add up the forces in the y-axis. And then the next step is going to be to write out Newton's second law in that axis. And then lastly, I can set those things equal to each other and see what happens. So this is now my overall equation in the y-axis. And it's important at this point to start asking ourselves: is anything zero? So can you anticipate anything being zero in this equation here? And the answer is there is one thing that's zero. That's going to be your acceleration in the y. Remember, this object's not magically floating into the surface or up into the atmosphere in an accelerating rate. It's not moving in the y-axis. So therefore, its acceleration in the y is zero. And that means that whole term drops out. And just a heads up, we are looking for our normal force over here. That's typically what we solve for in the y-axis. And that's because we already know this, and we already know this. We're going to solve for our normal force. So let's go ahead and show the work for that. We're just isolating for the normal force. Now at this point, I plug in my numbers towards the very ends, and I do the calculation and get my answer. So that gives us one more piece of the puzzle, so to speak. Let's go ahead and put that into our overall list of known values. And the last strategy you're going to use for these problems is you're going to bring the x and the y-axis together with the friction equation. So up until now, we've talked about the x-axis and the y-axis as separate. This equation is really crucial because what it allows you to do is bring together the x-axis, which this is in the x-axis, and the y-axis, and this is going to be in the y-axis. And so now we can go ahead and plug in our numbers here, and we end up with 9.32 newtons. That's our kinetic friction force, and I can go ahead and update my known and unknown values if I'm keeping track of what I'm doing in a systematic way. Now let's go back to that equation I would labeled as equation one previously and think about what more we know and what we can solve for it. So here it is, and what we know, we now know this, we know this, and we know what our mass is as well. We can solve for our acceleration in the x. If we go ahead and isolate and then plug in our numbers, we end up with an answer of 3.89 meters per second squared. That is exactly what the simulation came up with as well. So that's a good sign that we and the simulation are probably both correct. And what I would like to do at the end here is I would like to review these steps, these strategies. I will say that I have truthfully taught thousands of physics students at this point. 
And I can tell you right now, I've had many smart students who won't listen and follow strategies, and they get lost, and they don't know why they get lost. You may be a smart student, and you may think, oh, I'm too smart for strategies. I'm too smart for following a stepwise pattern of being able to solve problems. But I'm telling you right now, if you put this in the practice, you can solve these problems and avoid mistakes. You will avoid more mistakes than you would otherwise. All right, so just a quick recap. Write what the problem gives you in terms of variables in the x and the y axis. Separate it out in the x and the y axis. Then draw your free body diagram. Solve for components and whatever else you can start with. Use the sum of the forces strategy in the x axis and the y axis separately. And lastly, bring the x and the y axis together with the friction equation and essentially solve for your unknown. So if you can follow those five straightforward steps, you can do this. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments, please throw one down below. I'm going to be doing other screencasts in this topic of forces, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.